Welcome to my Commodore 64 Games of Memories. This is where I look at old games and some of the technical details behind them. Let's get into it. Today we have Hunter's Moon Remastered, specifically the video compression. I've had a few questions about the video compression and also how video sequences and how the cartridge format allowed the video sequences to happen on this version of the game. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are all always very much appreciated. So for those that don't know, I was lucky enough to work on this Hunter's Moon remastered version for the rebooted Thalamus and the cartridge version has this intro. It also has an animated outro as well. So when we look at it in C64 Debug OE, we can see straight away that the top part of the screen is using some sprites and it's also using a couple of bitmap screens, at least two. It's using a double buffered bitmap screens for the top and then text mode for the bottom. There's a little split there in the middle. The next screen in the intro sequence should be, I think, the ship in the hangar with the person standing next to it. Yeah, so this particular segment of the intro animation has a few sprites overlaid on top of the bitmap screen. The bitmap screen is supplemented by having these sprites over the top to add extra color, and that's because the original renders were sometimes using extra colors that that weren't in the base bitmap capability so i just added a pass and this is the first part of the video compression is how the uh, images for the video are actually processed and how the base data which you hope to display on Commodore 64 is converted so in this case i wrote a conversion tool to take uh, bitmap images and then as best as it could match them to the bitmap color constraints. And then if there were any pixels left, then see if it can actually offload those pixels to sprites overlaid on top of the bitmap. And it would do that iteratively until it either ran out of pixels or it ran out of sprites to supplement the bitmap display. Now we know from C64 Debug GUI that the video sequences use overlaid sprites. So let's look at this now in ICU 64 because we can open up the double buffered bitmap screen side by side and also the two sprite graphics debug map view views there. And we're looking at the first two banks. We're also looking at the mem memory view because we want to see exactly what's going on in terms of reads and writes and copies. Now notice in the memory view, when the first video sequence comes on, we have this green bar moving steadily down the screen. This actually indicates sequential reads all the way through this area of memory. Now this block of memory actually corresponds to the cartridge ROM bank information. Also the screen up at the top of the memory view, we have the two bitmap screens plus all of that sprite data and everything else. In these two areas here, we have up to eight sprite slots for each double buffered bitmap display as well. So I'll zoom into those areas. And as the video sequences play, you'll be able to see sometimes sprites being added to this area, sprite definitions, sprite graphics rather. These sprite graphics basically in, in this sequence they accentuate the person standing in front of the spacecraft for example because those are the moving parts of the bitmap. Now the underlying graphics conversion tools spot all of these areas of the bitmap that should have extra color information and it just automatically adds it. Now once the data is converted. There needs to be some code to play it back, which is what this code does. It just basically opens up uh, a you know, couple of double buffered bitmap screens. It reads the data from the cartridge and then 
runs the decompression routine. There's also some extra code in there for screen split and stuff like that. Now all of this code is in my GitHub. It's been in there for quite some time already and you're perfectly welcome to try and use it yourself. I have no problem with that. So when the screen data is converted, you basically get blobs of data for each bitmap screen plus the sprites plus the color screen or the two color screens rather. And this blob of data, some of it, if the bitmap screen doesn't change from one frame to the next, there's going to be no change in that binary data. If there is some change in the bitmap screen, in other words, if it scrolls or if extra stuff is added to the next frame, then portions of this binary blob of data is gonna get changed. And that's where the next part of the tool comes in. So I'm going to run uh, the outro from, of the, the game winning outro, the game complete outro, if you like, from the Hunter's Moon remastered demo because it goes on for longer. Now, to get Hunter's Moon, the release version, to play the outro, all you need to do is just poke a 1 into 3FE at the right point early on in the boot cycle, and then the cyber load now loading thing comes up with the game over game complete. So this sequence you can see much more clearly the advancing green read through the the ROM bank data and then how that results in the binary blobs of data which then get rendered as bitmap data in the Commodore 64. How different blobs of bitmap data are copied and moved around in the upper part of the memory. The code and tooling is actually not limited to a small area of the screen. It can be a full screen animation as well. This animation wasn't actually used in the final release version of the remastered version, but it looks very nice and it's full screen. So we'll use it as a little example. So though all of those images are converted into binary lumps of data and those binary lumps of data then just basically render bitmaps on, on the Commodore 64 with overlaid sprites. Um, all of the code is in my GitHub repository there and I'll put a link to the GitHub repository in the description as well. So conv2 underscore one dot bat calls conframe two dot bat which calls the um, child pack utility which takes an input bitmap and outputs a uh, a bitmap data plus the color screens plus the sprite information and position information and stuff like that. And then the binary blobs of data then go into conv delta 2. Conv delta 2 con calculates the deltas between each binary blob of data. So once all of the image, you know, bitmap image to bitmap color data conversion happens, then the conv delta routine, what it looks for is that it looks for areas of the screen that are not changed. It looks for the areas of the screen data or any data, rather than just binary blobs of data. It looks for things which are moved between frames and it does, it says to copy it from one place to the other. It also detects new data that's been introduced and it stores that data as well as literal blobs of data that need to get added to the binary blob in the memory. And it also looks for really commonly used data and it adds that very commonly reused data into a common dictionary. And the job of that dictionary is to store the most commonly seen bits of repeated data. So if there's repeated graphics between lots of different frames that are um, dotted around the place, then it puts that in a dictionary so, the, so that the dictionary can be quickly referenced and it's cheaper to reference it from the dictionary than it is to copy it in as new literal data. So this delta compression can actually delta compress anything. It doesn't have to be image data. It's just that the delta, it's just that the image conversion process generates uh, binary blobs of data which are formatted in such a way as to get displayed on the Commodore 64 as graphics data, but it, it could be anything. It could be sprite data where you have a delta compression added to it, or it could be sample data, it could be animation data, it doesn't, or it can be code. 
uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just really quite an efficient way of handling the data. Once you've got the data structured in such a way that you can perform delta compression on it, then the delta compression method works quite well. So 40 times 25 times 10 times 100 gives you 1 million bytes. So 1 million bytes of raw data is actually compressed to 433,613 bytes of data. So it's less than half, which is for, for, you know, for moving video data, it's actually uh, quite a good compression ratio. Now it's 40 times uh, 25 uh, times 10, because you've got an extra two bytes for the color information plus eight bytes for the character cell itself in the bitmap data. And of course it's 100 frames because the animation is 100 frames. So if we run that in uh, ICU 64, you can see that we have a nice full screen um, animated display for the spaceship. And we can see in the debug graphics map views uh, exactly how much data is being read and how much data is being copied around in these two full screen video frames. Uh, of course, for a full bitmap screen, it's actually taking more than one frame uh, it's taking maybe two or three or sometimes even four frames to update, which is one of the reasons why the screens in Hunter's Moon uh, remastered were smaller is because it was quicker to maintain a good frame rate. Also, it was to squeeze the intro and the outro sequence into the available memory of the uh, available cartridge data. If I put a breakpoint at the lower part of zero, well, in zero page, uh, you can see that there's actually quite a lot of uh, optimized code. And the reason why the optimized code is in zero page is because there are quite a lot of optimizations to do with updating uh, low and high bytes for indirected copies uh, by, by then running the code which accesses those um, indirected memory addresses and also as absolute memory addresses as well. So you, you get a cycle back. You, you, it's cycle cheaper at least to access those zero page registers as opposed to trying to update them in absolute memory in 16 bit memory terms. I'm going to leave the uh, game outro sequence running in a relatively full screen device window here with CRT filters applied to it. I just think it looks really lovely. The graphics in this look fantastic. And when I look back at this I, I basically see the artistry but I also in the back of my mind I'm running through all of the code that, that went into this and all of the effort that went into creating this system. Anyway, so thank you very much for watching these Retro Games Memories videos. If you like what you see, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel, and I hope to catch you around next time. Have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.